if you google PC beat etching with laser engravers it'll look no further. Looks like about a year ago I created a video picking out the top 5 methods I could find on YouTube for making printed circuit boards by using a toner transfer process. Now that we're like stellar, right? So there's something wrong with each one of those. One of them right at the end was actually okay but it's still a tedious and variable filled process and I wanted a better way to do that. Also I'm just building the prototype for the some racing bud box and uh, this has got hundreds of connections on it, it'd be great. We can do this on a prototype board like this, but it'd be great if we had a PCB we could just plug every solder everything into. So uh, projects collide. So it's half and half looking at laser engravers because I don't really have a project I need one for and they're quite expensive. But this one that I did get, it's an Atomstack 22 Pro, came up on a local auction site and it was a quarter of the price if I wanted to buy it new. Seems though this machine is 22 watts, which is quite powerful in the scheme of things for a diode machine. Other machines go into hundreds when you've got CO2 or something like that. Uh, it doesn't have the power to um, disintegrate copper. So laser is basically burning things with fire in a straight line. And it, I've had it when it's delaminated the copper, so the copper's got so hot it's unstuck from the printer circuit board. But that's sort of the extent of it really. And I don't want to go through the process of trying to burn off the copper if I went really 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 slow perhaps we'll do it but it'll just make a mess. So what I'm going to do is not particularly scientific but I'm going to spray just some black enamel paint over the top of a printer circuit board and then try and remove that paint with the laser engraving and then the exposed areas will be etched away just using the regular method of using chemicals in, a, uh, in the bath. So once you've got your enclosure and your burner and you've also got a computer the other thing you need is software to um, drive it all. And there's, I've, I've, there's two knocking around, there's probably several, but um, this one I've got at the moment is using Laser GRBL, which is a free open source software that drives lasers. It's connected straight away without an issue to my machine. And the other popular one I understand is Lightburn. I've had a, had a look at that, but um, for just my teeth, I'm just starting out in lasers, I'm not sure. I'm just trying to find my feet so I'm just using this laser GRBL software and what it can do is you can see on the screen it can create a, um, a test pattern which has the speed at what the laser is going to move across and the amount of power it's called an S value we'll call it strength because I'm not sure what it's supposed to be called and it increases the strength and then increases the speed to give you an output which is like a, a grayscale on um, on your on your materials for so for PCB etching, there's obviously going to be a sweet spot where it's going to uh, be fast enough and uh, take off enough of the paint for it to etch through. So I printed this, burnt this one off, and then I burnt off the identical uh, diagram or test pattern on copper, and it came out quite unusual, really. I was expecting it to be like a mirror image of the wood one because it's it's doing the opposite right it's taking material away on the wood it's making it darker whereas it's just taking paint off but as you can see it's not quite right it's got up in the corner here it's a bit darker down the bottom left here it's a little bit lighter and it doesn't make much sense apart from the very bottom row so aside from that I just picked which one of those patches had the most paint removed and then created my test file which I was using in the previous video to try and make a circuit board. It came out pretty good, as you can see here, it's pretty much etched away everything, we can see all the lines. It's just a film, thin film of paint across the top, and uh, I wasn't sure how it was gonna work out, but I chucked the board into my solution. I've just got an old barbecue here in a pot, and I use this um, aluminum sulfate, I think it is, and to uh, etch away. I didn't do a really good job of mixing up my etchant and water, so it took forever to try and remove all the paint you can see in some areas here there's still some paint on and there was just a thin film across everything so it wasn't quite enough power to remove the uh, paint enough for it to give it a good etching but it seemed to come out good enough but I really wanted to dial in the, the right power and speed to uh, get a better result so I moved on to a sort of a lacquer paint I mean the thing is you're spraying the paint on you don't have many layers that is and it's sort of these are they're variable it's like the amount of heat you put on to a turn a transfer how long did I need to hold the heat on this is like how long how much paint should I put on top of this thing so I sprayed it on let it wait no more 10 or 15 minutes to dry and then burnt another one 
and you can see with this silver paint I've still got black coming out and it sort of explains the mystery behind the uh, first test I did with the black area where it should have been lighter that's because the paint itself is just disintegrating and, and turning into it's just burning so the black areas you can see on the silver one is this burnt paint so I sort of adjust the power levels until I found the one I want and then I burnt another uh, test to see if I can get a better result out of the etching and this etch came out again with this black sort of residue on it and I found all I needed to do was just wipe it off so I had a, once I wiped that off I had a perfect masking of what I wanted to etch so I tried to etch this one again I got my mixtures as it specified on the packet for my etchant material and it etched it all the way in like two or three minutes it was a really good drought compared to the other one I did it's probably about the same quality but it sort of lets me know where I can sort of start from the 0.1 millimeter lines I, I'd never want to use myself anyway I mean the 0.5 lines are about the thinnest I'd ever want to go for so for that that's sort of ideal I can see the 0.1s and the 0.2s they're definitely not joining up and I don't think it's going to be able to do that but I never I never want to so for my homemade purposes this is sort of the ideal situation so for the end result I use at a power of about S100 for a 22 watt machine it's less than 5 watts probably the power it's using and quite fast at F3500 and it's produced this result so you can even get one of those really cheap uh, laser engravers less than 5, 5.5 watts and be able to make these PCBs straight away so it's it's ideal for me because I can have a pile of these boards sitting around with the lacquer on them I've painted on them already I can etch it in less than two minutes have it in the bath in another four or five minutes and I've got a PCB in under 10 minutes so for me it's an ideal situation and if I get it wrong I can just wipe off all the paint spray it on again and do, do another round the laser etching with uh, paint on PCB is definitely doable it's been the best result of all the ones I've done so far uh, it's it's quick it's manageable there's no ironing of paper or trying to stick paper onto a piece of copper and hoping for the best what you get out of the machine is exactly pretty much what it's going to look like when it's etched it's going to get that etching solution bang on if you made it this far you should totally subscribe if you want to see uh, the end result of this uh, button box with sim racing uh, you should also subscribe if you want to see the video which was the uh, first half of this one from last year just click up here otherwise thanks for watching